We're here to answer your game, gaming or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media always works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Now, the best way is for questions to come through the website. That way they get tracked and logged and all that happy stuff so they don't vanish and you don't forget about them in your stream of Twitter flying by. I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Well, today we've got a question from Jeff who writes... What are some good, free, printable D6 games for Family Night? Okay. One autistic, one, AD, one ADHD, we play games like Yahtzee and Farkle, but would like and are willing to expand into the RPG universe or multiverse. Interesting. <laughs> multiverse. Well, thank you very much for the question, Jeff. Um, while we did get this question before the current worldwide mess i thought this would be a good time to bring this one up it seems particularly timely right now so this was in our question pile it's, a, it's an older question from jeff i don't know jeff's last name they didn't leave it it's not jeff seuss who i thought it might be at the time especially by bringing into the rpgs but he wouldn't be just expanding into rpgs uh so i thought this was a good time to talk about this one so one of the best things before we get into game recommendations is what i love about games that use the humble d6 a d6 i hope everyone knows is a standard six-sided die you know one to six six sides is that most people have them right like i i don't know anyone who doesn't have some in their house somewhere even if they're not gamers right like someone's got that copy of monopoly with six sets of hoses in it and it probably has two d6 actually it's probably got four d6 in it because you only need two uh, and that's why you see so many games designed just to use the standard six-sided die, especially independent uh, designers tend to do this, right? So it's not why, um, so you don't have to buy anything else to play the game. And it's as a side note, it's also why you see so many games that use the standard deck of cards for the same reason. It's almost everyone has a deck of cards. So tonight, we're going to list off some of the best games that need little more than just some dice. Now, some of these may require to print something off, and many are going to require some kind of pen, pencil, paper, but you're not going to need any fancy gaming supplies. You're not going to need polyhedral dice or thick rule books or miniatures, pawns, meeples, resource cubes, or any of that fancy stuff. Even if you don't have a printer, as some people are going more digital than ever these days, you can mm. usually find a way to read or mark up sheets on a mobile device if there isn't, and in many cases turns out to be, a mobile app. To manage the paper uh, aspects. Yeah. yeah, to be honest, I didn't dive into it, but when we get into the games here tonight, many of these have mobile implementations, and many are pass and play. But I was looking for physical tabletop, not digital. So I'm going to start off with the two Jeff mentioned, uh, just for people out there that aren't Jeff who may be looking for free D6-based games. Uh, yes, you can buy copies of these two particular games, but the full rules and score sheets are available online for free, and I'm pretty sure you're not copyright infringing or anything like this. I think they're they're common market or out of copyright. I don't know. As far as I can tell, it's legal to, to grab these games online. So first up is Yahtzee. Uh, this is obviously the classic and most well-known roll-and-write game in the world or at least in North America. Actually, to be honest, I don't know if it's something that people in Germany play or not. Uh, pretty much everyone I know, and most people who are listening, I'm sure, know this one. Uh, my favorite version is a travel version that was out in the 80s, and it was awesome. It was in this plastic blue thing that you rolled the dice and you pushed the back of it to lock them. But you know what? That wasn't free, so it doesn't really belong on this list. But Yahtzee, like, uh, come on. Roll, roll your five dice, re-roll up to twice, trying to make sets. Five dice, a pencil, and some scrap paper, and you're good to go. But there are also many, many free Yahtzee scoring apps for all oh, yeah. mobile platforms, both official Yahtzee uh, branded or just, you know, Yahtzee, called Yahtzee uh, scoring apps. And that just takes the, uh, the ease of, of having to worry about math out of it. Yep. All right, next is Farkle. Uh, this is the other game that Jeff mentioned. Now, this one, I had no clue about growing up. I don't know how. I, I missed this one. It's, it's as far as I can tell, about as ubiquitous as Yahtzee. Um, this one, I actually learned through Facebook. Uh, this was one of those Facebook acts that I was addicted to at one time, along with, you know, Words with Friends and Candy Crush. Yes, I played Candy Crush. I don't know many people who didn't. I still play match three games, just not Candy Crush. Uh, this is a neat pusher luck dice game that I actually found way more fun than Yahtzee. I find Farkle a much more enjoyable experience than Yahtzee. But again, just needs, I think it's five dice, it might be six. Well, uh, that was Farkle. 
All right, on to some new recommendations for Jeff here. So Liar's Dice. Uh, we brought this one up a couple times when talking like about six-player games last week. It's another classic. The rules can be easily found online. There's even a Wikipedia page that tells you how to play. Uh, it has the added benefit of not needing a pencil and paper. All you do need is five dice and a cup, but you need that for every player. So this one might be a bit rough unless you are a gamer and have a ton of dice in your house, but you don't know. Never know. Um, what you do need, the, the cup's optional. You just need some way to hide the dice from the other players. Uh, this is a great big group game because you can literally play with as many people as you want as long as you have cups and dice. That's awesome. And that was Liar's Dice. Next up is Bunko. Mm -hmm. This dice game is designed to be played with 12 players, but it can be played by any number divisible by four. You need at least three dice for each group. So 12d6 in total. This game, players are trying to roll triplets on their three dice with bonus points awarded for hitting the same number as the round number called a bunko. Obviously, this game is played over six rounds. Nice if you got a big group, and that was bunko. Next, you have Ship Captain Crew. This is a really simple game. This is a bar game. This is the kind of thing people usually play with drinks involved. All it needs is five dice. You're going to get three rolls to try to roll a six, which represents the ship, a five, which represents the captain, and a four, which represents the crew. If you manage to do that in three rolls, the other two dice is your score. You add those up. Whoever has the highest score wins. Whoever loses, drinks, you know, it's a drinking game. What I thought was fascinating about this game is this is pretty much the system that Tower of Madness used, that Kerplunk based game, right. which I had no idea at the time was based on a classic bar dice game. No, oh, and that was Ship Captain Crew. Next up is Sid Jackson's Solitaire Dice. This dice game from the classic game designer, Sid Jackson, is probably most well known for Acquire and other 70s bookshelf games, is great because you can play it solo. Mm. Well, actually, as the name implies, you can only play it solo. Fair. You just need 5D6, a pencil, and some paper to play. And again, that's Sid Saxon, two S's, not oh, Jackson. Is, oh, it is Saxon. Oh, you know what? Okay. Yeah, Sid Saxon. I thought that was a typo. My bad. <laughs> no, no, not a typo. Sid Saxon, who made a choir in uh, a whole bunch of old Avalon Hill games, one of the famous ones. Um, that is another one you can find the rules online. It's also sometimes just called Solitaire. Uh, what we will do too is we're going to drop links to all these in the show notes. Uh, we're not going to drop them in the chat tonight, but in the show notes, you'll have links to where you can get all of these free games. That was Sid Saxon's Solitaire Dice. Another famous game designer putting out a free dice game is Rainier Nizia's Decathlon. Dr. Nizia has this dice game up for free on his personal website. It's a family weight roll and write that needs 8d6. And what's neat in this game is you actually play through 10 different micro games each representing different events in a decathlon, and then it's whoever won the most of the events that wins the overall thing. So it's a bunch of different neat dice-based games all in one game. That was Rainier Nitsa's Decathlon. Now next up is one I play on a regular basis digitally, Can't Stop. Four dice and a piece of paper or whiteboard and some markers, you too can play this push-your-luck dice game. You just need 11 columns representing the numbers from 2 to 12, some markers to keep track of where everyone's place on the board. And then you roll those four dice and see what columns you can advance on using uh, groups of dice. Sure. You can only move on three columns during your turn though. So if you don't roll one of those three numbers that you chose, uh, that you've chosen on a, con on a uh, following turn, you're out and you have to move back <laughs> to where you started from. So... That is Can't Stop. Can't Stop, a classic. I still want a physical copy of this somehow, like like a nice wooden board or plastic or something. It, it just, I, I think it'd be a great game for, for easy mode nights or if we happen to start doing a bar night or something, or even New Year's Eve. Yep. I just think that it as there's something to play before people show up. There are some fantastic DIY versions that came oh, yeah. out there. The people who love this game go crazy for designing oh, yeah. boards about it. It's really both mm -hmm. bizarre and interesting at the same time. All right, up next we have Utopia Engine. This one just looks really cool. This is a free print and play dice game for one player. It's a one sheet. You print it out. It's got all kinds of nice artwork on it and all these boxes you're going to start crossing off. And what you're doing is you are rolling dice to try to build this fanciful device from the distant past. 
trying to stop an incoming doomsday. All you need is 2d6, a pencil, and an eraser, which is important because there is stuff you're going to mark off and then cross out. And, well, the one-page sheet that you can get free online. And that was Utopia Engine. Next up is 30 Rails, a dice game about building railway networks onto a 6x6 grid of squares. Mm -hmm. The name comes from the fact that it's played over 30 turns. Wow. Each dice, tur uh, each turn, dice are rolled to determine which track you have to place and in what row column you have to place it. There's cool. even an advanced game that includes stocks and shares. One of the more complex I ones on our list, I think. Yeah, definitely. You know what sounds cool about this? This sounds like an early version of Railroad Inc. Absolutely. Like that, it, <laughs> it, it sounds like a, a free... Yeah non-specialty dice version of Railroad Inc. And I think Railroad Inc. is a really cool game. So this one looks really neat to me. This of the list just kind of really spoke to me. Well, then the interesting thing about this uh, is that not only is Railroad Inc., uh, you almost suffer from too many choices. Yes. Whereas this one, uh, the dice give you uh, are more controlling. Yeah. Uh, so. And that was 30 rails. Next, I have The Great Races. Uh, this is a dice game using a dedicated score sheet. Players roll their dice and gather them in pairs. Each line in the score sheet represents a different race. The pairs are going to get added together, so you're going to have your, all your numbers on 2d6. The first player to complete any, um, a complete a set of, uh, sorry, complete one set, one column wins that race. At the end, the game ends when every race is completed. The player with the most races wins the overall game. And I got to say, this is very similar to Kent's Stop, but takes out that whole push your luck element. If right. you can't place your dice, you can't, you're just done. Like you take a turn, I take a turn, you take a turn, I take a turn. Which, so which, there is some. Yeah. It's either the benefit or the downfall. Some people really love yeah. that push your luck, whereas some people might hesitate from you know the uh, inevitable anger that comes when you've just moved yeah, 12 you just keep you know, rolling you're so close thing. to winning and then you're done you're out yeah. and you lost everything and that was the great races and next up the mini quest here's one for the fantasy adventure fans it plays two to three players and you just need three dice a pencil an eraser and the free print and play rules and sheets players play heroes that travel around a hex map gaining loot, and eventually taking on the boss. I gotta say, this one looks really neat. This is one I'm tempted to download myself and check out. It's got a got a good fantasy, Zelda, D&D &D kind of feel to it. And that is the mini quest. Next, I've got 13 sheep. This is a quick roll and write where players draw fences to protect as many of their sheep before the wolves come. Each turn, players roll a die to determine what type of fence they have to draw. The game lasts seven to 10 rounds because those last few rounds, if you roll sixes, the game comes to an end, where if you don't, it keeps going all the way to 10. At the end of the game, you get one point based on every protected sheep you have. This seems like a variation of 30 rails almost uh, where it sounds much simpler, you know, but yeah, you're, you're, you're looking for enclosures rather than roots, but you know, very similar sort of concept. And that was, yeah, it's got a definite um, role to see what you play seemed to be a common roll and write mechanic. Uh, yep. uh, here's a chart. You get this thing. Now draw that thing. Yep. And that was 13 sheep. Now moving over to the RPG side of things. All right, so soon as I got this question and it said the RPG multiverse, something popped in my head right away. And anyone who is a fan of Star Wars probably thought the same thing if they know about this. And that is the Open D6 system. This is the system that West End Games used for their cinematic RPGs. Now, that includes Ghostbusters and a couple other games, but the most famous is their Star Wars D6 system, the WEG, W-E-G, Star Wars system. Now, after they lost the Star Wars license and then there was, to Wizards of the Coast, there was some other mess going on here with licenses but eventually they released the base d6 system at, under the ogl or the open gaming license which is something that started year 2000 with dnd 3.5 or 3 third edition dnd what this means is now that base system behind star wars is free to be used by any designers and now some companies have taken that license and produced retail games that you can buy there are a handful that took that open license and used it to release open and free games. And that is the West End Games Open D6 system. Now, some specific examples of 
the Open D6 system. Uh, they're really generically named, so it's pretty obvious. You have D6 Space for playing sci-fi and space opera. Uh, you have D6 Fantasy for doing dungeon crawls and epic quests. You got D6 Adventure. This is for anything from Old West to Pulp to Modern. Uh, there are other ones out there. There's D6 Legends and so on. Again, these are the three I would recommend. All right. Uh, another example of an uh, open D6 fantasy game that was published and available for sale is Azamar. It is now available for uh, pay what you want in PDF format. Yeah, this is one I actually physically own uh, because I got it at the same time from the same publisher. They put out a game. I kickstarted this. I paid to kickstart the game. It's called Westward. It's a cattle punk western sci-fi steampunk there's steam mechs and cows and cattles but it's set in space so like think of the um space sci-fi as in like firefly like the the outback when they land right. on the planets without the spaceships you're never leaving the planet so a really unique setting i loved the the cover art shows the steam mech pulling a horse-drawn wagon not being drawn by horses but by a mech and i just thought it was fantastic i had to get that this is now available free with the basic version. Now, the basic version is a non-searchable, low-res PDF. It's just pictures of the sheets, right? It's not scanned in, but you can get that free. It's got the full rules, and it uses the OpenD6 system. The other thing, too, is this features some awesome artwork from a personal friend of mine, Rob Chope. So that's just a nice shout-out to Rob, because I, 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 I made that connection and got his artwork <laughs> in that book, and I'm proud of that. All right, well, another RPG worth checking out, especially if playing with younger kids, is D6 Dungeons. It's specifically designed for new players and younger players with little to no RPG experience. Yeah, this is one that's even simpler than the Open D6 system. And speaking of that, someone really simplified the Open D6 system, and they released it as called Mini 6. So it's a super light version of the Open D6 system with even more streamlined rules. Now, this is just a generic system that you can do what you want with. And then another D6 base system that has nothing to do with Open D6, this is completely original system, is the PIP system quick start rules. Uh, this is from Aloy La Santa, Aloy the Saint um, of Third Eye Games. These are the games that drive purchasable games like Mermaid Adventures. Now, I've mentioned Mermaid Adventures on the show before. This was one of the first games I used to introduce my girls to, D to RPGs. And all you need to be able to play that game, besides the book and pens and papers, is two different colors of D6. They recommend black and white, but you can use two any other colors. It's dead simple. You roll the white dice based on all your skills, and you will count successes for or higher. The black dice are the difficulty, which are set by the DM. So it's, oh, it's a difficulty three task. You're going to roll three black dice again. Anything that's four, five, or six cancels out successes. If you have more successes than failures, you did what you want. That's a really simple version of the PIP system. The basic quick start rules, which you can use to basically play any type of RPG, are available free. All right. Well, and while we haven't tried it, I did see that GURPS Light is a free <laughs> system that only uses D6. Fair enough. I, I admit, I'm, I'm kind of surprised there's groups out there for light, but that's cool. Steve Jackson Games, give them back. All right, I'm going to leave you with one. Uh, we actually recommend this a lot on uh, the podcast, surprisingly, for how little we've actually played, and that's Fate Core. Um, now, normally, you would need fudge dice, or there's modern Fate dice, but you need special dice that have pluses and minuses on them to play any Fate games. But you know what? There's nothing to stop you from using a normal D6. One to two is minus. Three to four is blank. Five to six is plus. Yeah, it would take a bit to get your mind around it, but it works. Now, Fate is very different from traditional role-playing games. So Jeff, in particular, going back to the original question, is talking about getting into RPGs, and I honestly have no idea if Fate would be a fantastic, awesome way to experience RPGs for the first time because it would be such a different perspective from what I grew up with. Or a terrible idea, because the whole idea of aspects and storytelling is so different. I really don't know. All I know is that if you start role-playing with Fate, you're going to be in a different boat than most of us out here. Well, that's it for our thoughts on free D6-based games. Now let's head over to the lobby and see if the awesome folk gathered there have anything to add. Well... In the lobby, we see uh, Red Meeple Ryan, who's calling uh, your one suggestion there, Cattle Tech. Uh, Cattle the, Tech, uh, okay. For the, 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 the sci-fi sci Western. Uh, I like it, I like. Uh, so I, I, they, they, they coined the term, well, they didn't coin the term, but I made them use on their Kickstarter the term Cattle Punk. 
Frank which is Frank. something I first read a long time ago in Knights of the Dinner Table, and I always like that term because it wasn't just cowboys and Indians, right? There's, there's a little bit more to that punk feel, right? The, the, the little more badass. It's not just black and white. It's more rage against the authority. You're playing the rebels, not not the uh, you're not the sheriff, right? So right. I kind of like that feel. I admit Westward's a really neat game, and Azamar is the fantasy version of that in my head, though I know Azamar came out first. But those are both games that like cost real money for a long time. That now the publishers have have since moved on to other things. It's uh, Wicked North Games is the company that publishes both of them. Right. Uh, I am and... surprised no one in the chat knows any um, free d6 base game i expected like just a wave of independent rpgs that people could play to come from our chat room maybe RPG, we need jeff well, we mentioned fiasco yesterday or last week uh, fiasco is uh, not available free though and no fiasco is not free and then uh durant's but again i don't think that's free no either. that's that's the follow-up uh, to fiasco from the same designer um jason morningstar Unless yeah. unless the fiasco like SRD is available free. So Spirit of the Century, so the original Fate games before Fate Core, those are available free. Uh, there's an SRD that was called Spirit of the Century is the game that took Fudge, which is a generic use of universal role-playing system, not GURPS, so I don't know what Fudge stands for, that came up with Fudge Dice. A game was created for that called Spirit of the Century. That is available free. Um, there are, there you go. Uh, Red Meeple Ryan is pointing out that there are battle tech quick start rules at that point though. And you're getting into standees or miniatures though. Like that, that's pushing the, yeah, yeah, all yeah. you need is six level. Yes. I guess you could print and play the little standees. Yeah. No, it's fair. Like I, to, to admit, I did not write this list off the top of my head. It took some research to come up with these games. Some I knew right away. I'm like, oh, man. In particular, I was going to point out a, a certain Star Wars game, but I have since learned that the um, it is not light under used under license. So right. we are not going to mention that one in particular. I thought it was. I thought it was. Like, not that I thought LucasArts or Disney gave them the permission, but I thought because of how it was published... Like, it's something you can buy a physical copy of, but no, I RPG Geek very clearly explained right. that it was not something, and we are not advocating ever piracy. No, no. Absolutely not. Now, again, Fiasco is only $12 for the core set, and they are yeah. pointing out in the chat room that once you get the core, there are many yes. play sets that are free. Yep. No, so that's true. Play sets for are $12, free. For $12, you get, you get your, your your PDFs and your and your Mobis and all your all your fancy digital files. And then it can be free from that point on. So depending on uh, whether you want to go that direction or not. CeeLo. I don't know CeeLo. It's not one I know. C C Sewer Rat Zero says CeeLo. I don't gambly works, right? Like, like we could have put craps on this list, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Craps, fair enough. It's just, I don't, craps to me is not a family game. That no. was a, because he was looking to play with a family. And to me, craps is definitely gambling. But I like, think Farkle is basically gambling. Right. And to be honest, like this was a, a very short list. There are a lot more free rolling rights out there. Uh, what I'll probably do in the show notes is I'll drop a link because there are a couple really good. There's one, it's like 13 pages long, this geek list on Board Game Geek, which I use to get some of these suggestions. And what I did was I looked at the higher ratings and I read through how to play the games. I actually downloaded the PDFs and read them and basically went, would I play this or not? And that's how I made the determination. Interesting, actually. I'd never actually heard of the game CeeLo before, and it's CeeLo, yep. CeeLo, C-E-E-L-O. Uh, it's a uh, gambling game played with three six-sided dice. Uh, apparently, it was the most popular dice game played by Chinese Americans in 1893. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> oh, is that the with the bowl, probably? Uh, I, I'm not sure, but apparently that's actually where you go. CeeLo Green, who's a modern uh, artist, and apparently there are many hip-hop artists who refer to CeeLo it's it's a gambling game that's commonly Fair referred enough. to. I, I'm surprised I've never actually. It's just come probably the it. game they are playing in Bug Trouble in Little China. More than likely, my guess. Fair yeah. enough. Uh, yeah, that's a whole new. Board Game Geek Award Runner Up Roll Estate by Chris M of Flip the Table. Is that D sixes only? There are a lot of rolling rights out there. There are an awful lot, but a, quite a few of them require a little bit more, and quite a few cost money. Yeah. Finding free rolling rights was a little more difficult. Uh, $3 for Roll Estate. At okay, PNP, so at it, it's available. Arcade. It's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, the question wasn't cheap games. Yeah. <laughs> we were looking for free ones. And like I said, there are more. There are a lot more. These are the ones that, like I said, either caught my eye or had really good um, really good ratings, like over six or seven. I don't expect a rolling right to have an eight or a nine, right? I wasn't looking for eights and nines. 
I was looking for anything above a six, to be honest. Okay, this is unexpected. Valeria Card Kingdoms as a PNP. But that, you'd have to print an awful lot. I well, would yeah, it's, it's 119 pages. So yeah, you're, paying, like, you're paying $10 for the download, and then you're paying like 40 bucks well, for if, ink and if paper. You're, if you're stuck at home, I, I guess, guess it's a way to do it. But yeah, right now, that's the game of the week at uh, PNP Arcade is oh, Valeria dude. Card Kingdoms. Danielle just pointed out, I hadn't even thought of that. All the Lasers and Feelings games we were talking about last week. There we those go. Those only use D6s? Yeah. I forgot those only use D6s. I That's completely right. forgot about that. So, yeah, Lasers and Feelings, um, Love and Justice, um, Rocker Boys and Vending Machines, and all the other various versions of those. I think Lady ba Blackbird also may be D6 based. If Lady Blackbird, that's a fantastic free RPG. Now, none of those I would recommend to a brand new group. Like Jeff, I think this would be a terrible choice. Like, right. I don't think you would know what to do with a X and X game if you didn't know what role playing was ahead of time. Right. Like, those sheets don't tell you what a DM is or how to play or any of that, right? It's all just for information on how to make characters, and you'd probably be lost. So, not the best recommendations for Jeff, but great recommendations for people who know what they're doing. And not in, in general, for, for PNP, and again, I'm not going to say these are all D6 games. I, I'm not going to go through them all right now. But if you go to pnparcade.com, yes. they have a, a collection of free games. Uh, most of the Mint games are free right now. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Tiny Farms, Twin Stars, Wildest West, Two Rooms in a Boom. Uh, there's uh, five pages of free games right wow. now on PNP Arcade. No, I, admit, I, I did look at that. That's Utopia Engine comes from there on our list of of the ones I looked at. That one really jumped out to me. Yep, as being a D six game too. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so again, for for maybe not for the D six players, but for players in general, especially right now, where we're all hungry for for content. Yep. Uh, PNP Arcade free uh, collect slash collections slash d dash games. Totally fair. Yeah, we'll throw links to all this into the show notes. I thought it was an Absolutely. interesting topic, to be honest. Yep. I thought I thought it was. I had fun doing the research for this one. We'll put it that way. I, I don't know. Maybe I'll sit down and try them all at some point and review them because I'm going to run out of review content. But actually, I made some contacts recently, so maybe that won't happen. Well, yeah. So uh, Ryan's pointing out, role player is actually yeah. the opposite of Valeria, where it's cheaper to go buy. It, it's cheaper to buy a retail copy yeah, than yeah. to print it and buy all the dice. Memes. Well, yeah, and I think Valeria is probably about the same. Right? It's just. Yeah, it's like, so expensive. Unless you're going to play in black and white. Content. Yeah. Or you happen to work in an office that's not going to mind you using their printer. That, that's how I used to justify some of my <laughs> print and play purchases. Well, and, also, and yes, I, I had permission. I would not steal office resources. We were allowed to use the printer for personal use within reason. Yeah. And for the number of people printing off sports betting sheets, I did not feel guilty printing off my RPG content. <laughs> yeah, no. I, you know what? I have to say, and there's no real shuffling in, in Valeria. I was going to say, I would never no. want a card game where you shuffle, but there is no shuffling no, in there Valeria. Is not. It's not so a deck builder. In, in that way, it's actually not that bad. You don't need need the card stock no cards, exactly especially. You just print it on paper and black and white and be able to play yep cthulhu dice is one that's always in my bag if i missed mentioning the plethora of steve jackson dice games the thing with it sewer rat zero was the the the, the question was specifically standard d6 one to six okay. almost all those steve jackson dice games use unique dice right like that's how like king of tokyo doesn't work we aren't just looking for roll them rights and we're not just looking like like that's also why railroad inc wouldn't work because it uses unique d6s okay. we were looking for free games to play with standard d6s one to six six sides Though, to be fair, if it's a six-sided dice, you can build yourself a little translation chart. Oh, yes. Yes. Easy, fair, enough. fair enough. But then, then you're also getting into almost stealing people's games, right? Because yeah, Cthulhu, true. like those Steve Jackson games are purchasable. They're not free games. So, yes, you can make a free version of most board games. I can make a free <laughs> version of Terraforming Mars yep. with pencils and crayons, but that's doing a disservice to the designers of the game, in my opinion. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think there's enough free people out there. Well, I think that's it for our topic tonight. Yeah. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over at the blog, tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Gaming Advice at the top of the page.